Hello Spooksters, welcome to episode 8 of Spirit and Law. Today we're going to be talking about doppelgangers, what exactly they are, do they exist, and how are they depicted in media and fiction. So the word doppelganger is actually German and it means double goer and it refers to a wraith or apparition that casts no shadows and is actually like a replica or a double of a living person, also known as shadowed self. They were generally considered as bad omens and also bad luck. Or the uh, the theory, some believe, is if you actually see your doppelganger, this is a sign of impending death. So a doppelganger can be seen by another person's relative or friend. They would basically see the doppelganger and then this would be like a sense of danger or some illness that was going to happen to them. In some accounts, doppelgangers are sometimes called the evil twin, and this suggests they might attempt to provide advice to the person they shadow, but the advice is maybe misleading, like, hey, just go around that corner, everything will be safe. And then the person would listen to their doppelganger, and then something terrible, terrible would happen. Um, so it is. it was always advised to avoid communicating with their own doppelganger at all costs, because you don't exactly know why they're there, what they're there for, and maybe they might want to replace you. One of the most famous depictions of doppelgangers came from the 1851 sketch and the 1864 watercolour called How They Met Themselves by Dante Gabriel Rossetti. According to the interpretation, two medieval lovers are walking through the woods at twilight and they encounter their doubles who glow supernaturally. The men draw their swords in astonishment while his lover appears to collapse in a deathly swoon, now, in media and poems and literature, well, that's poems, uh, there has been many references of doppelgangers. For instance, The Vampire Diaries, which is a very successful, was a very successful TV series, had the repeat occurrence of different doppelgangers or shadow self. Now, doppelgangers were, spoiler alert, uh, of the main character, Elena Gilbert, and of Stefan Salvatore, they always had doppelgangers throughout the series. They would appear as maybe bad omens, or it would always be a bad sign whenever there was a doppelganger, because there was multiple ones in the series that would appear. Although there's a lot of cases where doppelgangers are said to be just works of fiction, there are actually a number of real-life cases in which individuals claim to have met their sinister duo. Now, among the most noteworthy is Abraham Lincoln's experience, as chronicled by Nora Brooks in his book Washington in Lincoln's Time. Now, this was out in 1850, no, 1895. And according to his account, soon after Lincoln was elected in 1860, he arrived home one day and looked into the bureau mirror where he saw himself reflected in double. Lincoln said, nearly at full length, but my face had two separate and distinctive images. Lincoln noted that although the images were nearly identical, one was actually a lot whiter in colour than the other. His wife was said to be very worried and told Lincoln she believed that the paleness of the half of the dual image was a bad omen, which meant that Lincoln would serve his full first full term, but he would not live to finish his second. The subject of a double has a long history, particularly in literature and in Greek mythology, which is my favourite. <laughs> Narcissus, which we actually mentioned in the last episode, falls in love with his reflection. See, you like how I did that little transition between podcast episodes? And in Gothic tales, such as Edgar Allan Poe's William Wilson, James Hogg's private memoirs and confessions of a justified sinner. Then we have other works like Elizabeth Geckel's The Poor Clare. Hey, that's my last name, which was out in 1856. And even Hans Christian Andersen's lesser red fairy tale, The Shadow. Characters are haunted and followed by their own malevolent likeness. However, the mythology of spirit devils has far more ancient origins. So one of the first and earliest references may have actually been in the Zavanti branch of Zora... How do I say this? Zoroastrisium. I'm probably not saying it right, but I gave it a good attempt. This sect distilled the general abstract duality of Zora, that word, into a concept of manifested twins born of a time. Now, it mentions the shadow, double, and the copies. Uh, the word doppelganger isn't used, but it does reference the kind of idea of having a shadow self. Then if we go all the way to Norse uh, folklore, it describes entities known as Vargada, ghostly beings that perceive their living counterparts, taking their places at various activities and performing their actions in advance. 
The spirit with the subject's footprints, voice, scent or appearance, an overall demeanour, precedes them in a location of activity, and this can result in believing they've seen or heard the actual person before the physical person arrives. This bears a subtle difference from a doppelganger with a less sinister connotation. So people from Orkney Islands in Scotland feared small, fairly like creatures called trowels, according to a legend. Trowels would give birth to children who would adapt to being sickly. Now, pregnant women were carefully guarded from the trowels, who would often steal healthy human babies and replace them with their own children, known as changelings, who would transform into exact replicas of the stolen children. Oh, that's really creepy. <laughs> There's a, I'm looking at a creepy image right now of this legend, and it just shows like a demon hooved, like bringing this healthy baby away and trans changing the babies between each other. Oh, I forgot to mention there's another media reference in um, Orphan Black, which is all about doppelgangers as well. The whole series is about doppelgangers. One of the opening scenes is the main character being at a train station and then seeing someone that looks exactly like her. But before she gets the full kind of face of her, this doppelganger falls into a train and kills herself. Now, you've probably experienced at some point or another in life, someone telling you they saw someone who looked exactly like you, or perhaps they thought they knew who that person was. <laughs> um, today we use the term doppelganger and we casually refer to this as a twin stranger or a random person who just happens to weirdly look a lot like people. And we also see this in a lot of celebrities looking like each other. This might be because the world of Hollywood wants a specific look and that's why they hire some people that look exactly the same because that is the look they're going for. For instance, we have some copy, copies of people in the famous world of Hollywood. We've got Ryan Reynolds and Ryan Gosling that look very similar. We have Katy Perry uh, and Zoe Deschanel that look very similar. I'm trying to think of other people. If you type it in Google, you're going to find... If you type in doppelgangers or twin celebrities, you'll find a lot of people that look exactly the same as other people, but they are not related in any way. I can't believe I'm forgetting so many examples in film. Oh, gosh darn it. Okay, so the most recent film and example of doppelgangers would be Jordan Peele's Us. He originally did the film Get Out and I recently watched Us, so I don't know why I didn't bring that up. And then as I mentioned, we have uh, The Vampire Diaries. We also have The Simpsons, the episode called Fear of Flying Homer Simpson is banned from entering Moe's Tavern. A man enters the bar afterwards, looking like Homer with a high hat and a moustache, claiming to be Guy incognito and he's beaten up and thrown out and the real homer passes by and notices rather casually that he has found his doppelganger so it has been shown in other things that i haven't mentioned before now what exactly do you think a doppelganger is do you think it might be maybe our um alter ego our shadow self do you think it's actually real and then also in scientific terms um there's actually a, oh, what is it called? I think it's hy hyrotroscopy. It's a term used um, in neurology for hallucinations or seeing one's body and at distance. And it can occur as a symptom of schizophrenia and epilepsy. And it is considered a possible explanation of the doppelganger phenomena. Now, whilst we're doing this, I want to see, I think last time I checked, there's actually some websites online where you can try to find your doppelganger. Now, would you want to find your doppelganger? Bearing in mind that there has been some words here and there that if you see your doppelganger, it's a bad omen. It's bad news. Do you think it's bad news? Good news? Do you think it's real? I want to hear your thoughts and your feelings. And it's just fantastic. Coming back to Spirit and Law, there will be more scheduled recordings here and there. I'll try to fit them in as fast as I can. And uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this episode and thank you for listening to Spirit and Law episode eight. <laughs> See you later. Spirit.